Hi boys and girls, welcome back. I just wanted to hop on really quickly and talk to you today about butterflies, more importantly about caterpillars and their life cycle. So I posted two videos on my lesson plan. The first one is called Butterflies. It's a brain pop video and it has and shows you the life cycle of a caterpillar. This video here is just to talk to you briefly about what's in store for this week. And it's going to be really short, not too, too long. And we're going to talk about the life cycle of a butterfly, how it starts as an egg, and then the egg hatches and it comes out as a larva. Now the larva that we normally see, we normally call it more importantly, a caterpillar. So it goes from an egg to a caterpillar and then into a chrysalis, or sometimes you hear it called a pupa, or we call it sometimes a cocoon, and then into a butterfly. And then it flies away and starts the cycle all over again. And as you, you've heard me talk before, a cycle is one of those things that keeps, keeps going and going and going and going, and it never really stops. If it would stop, it wouldn't be a cycle. It would just stop. And it only happen one time. A cycle is something that is continuous and keeps happening over and over again. Now, if you saw my post on Class Dojo or if you saw my post on Twitter, I had butterflies all over my face. That is because, boys and girls, I have butterflies. No, let me rephrase that. I have caterpillars that over the next few days will be turning into chrysalises or pupas or cocoons and hopefully we'll turn into some really pretty butterflies and we'll be able to let them loose in my backyard. So we will be setting some and watching some caterpillars turn into cocoons and I'll take pictures of them and post them on Class Dojo and on Twitter and the Far Fanny Fitzgerald Facebook page so you can watch them. And then we will watch them turn into butterflies. Now, next week's lesson will learn a little, a little bit more about butterflies and how butterflies survive and what they do. But this week, I just wanted to just hop on really quickly and talk about caterpillars. Now, the jar that I have them in, I actually did not go out and catch these because it's really hard. It's a little bit early in the season to go out and find caterpillars. They've just started to co start coming out. I know out in the front of my house, I have what I call tent worms. There are those ones that you see up in the trees. Um, I don't like them, they're nasty. Uh, that make like, they look like spider webs and they have the big web casings that you find in the trees. You usually find them in fruit trees, like crab apple trees and things like that. And they're the black long caterpillars and they have the yellow stripe down the side. Now caterpillars can come in all different shapes and sizes. They can look more like worms. They can be really tiny. They can be really long and thin. They can be fat. It just all depends. They can have, um, they can be smooth, they can be fuzzy, they can be spiky. The most important thing is though, is to leave caterpillars where they are and to not pick them up because they have an oil or um, something on their skin that can be poisonous to animals. That's why they are the way they are. And they warn predators off and away from them. So you wanna make sure that you kind of leave the caterpillars where you find them and you're not picking them up. And if you do pick them up, you need to go inside and wash your hands because you don't want those oils on. They can make your skin itch and blister. Some of them are very poisonous to the touch and you don't want to um, get that on your skin. So I'm gonna show you in sign language, the life cycle of a butterfly, and then you can um, show that to your mom and dad because it's kind of cool. So if you take your hand like this and you take one finger, Butterfly starts out or a caterpillar starts out. This is a sign for egg. And then it hatches from an egg and it goes into a caterpillar. This is a caterpillar crawling up your arm. Now, when a caterpillar hatches, it's very hungry. If you ever heard me read the book, Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar, when you were younger, in kindergarten, first grade, maybe, maybe even in second grade. I read that book a lot because it's one of my favorites by Eric Carl. We do this sign off a lot. So we have egg caterpillar. Now the caterpillar's main job in the world is to eat and caterpillars normally eat anything, plants, that's their favorite thing, leaves. So they might ruin your mom and dad's flower garden because that's what they like to eat, is eat and eat and eat because that's their main job. They need to get big because they undergo a huge metamorphic transformation to change from a caterpillar 
into a butterfly. Their whole body changes. They have to grow wings. They have to turn into this chrysalis. And that takes a lot of energy. So they need to get big and fat in order to undergo that change. Their whole body changes. So they need to get as much food stored up inside to undergo that change. So they eat a lot when they are a caterpillar. They just keep eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and growing and getting fat so they can undergo that change. So they go from egg to caterpillar. And when they're a caterpillar, they eat and eat and eat and eat. That's their main job in this world is to eat. So they can get big and fat so they can change into a cocoon. This is the symbol for a cocoon. So egg, caterpillar, cocoon, or chrysalis, whichever you want to call it, or pupa. Pupa, that's what you can call it. Egg, caterpillar, cocoon. And it stays as a cocoon. It can go anywhere from five to 10 days, might be even a couple weeks. It just depends on the, how the transformation, how long the transformation stays and takes place. And then when it comes out of its cocoon, this is butterfly. Okay, so one more time. We have egg, caterpillar, which eats a lot, cocoon and then butterfly. Now, I have seven caterpillars. Now, in my jar, there is not any leaves. They actually came when I got them. They came with uh, caterpillar food, specifically designed for these caterpillars to eat. So I don't have to feed them at all. There's enough food in there for the caterpillars to eat and sustain themselves and grow. When I got them, they were only probably about maybe three, maybe four millimeters long. Since that time, they've gotten huge. So I'm gonna show you. Now inside the jar, you will see there's, it looks like webbing. And the caterpillars each will uh, give off this webbing. They're moving around, you can see them moving around. They'll give off this webbing. And there's seven healthy caterpillars in here and they've grown quite a bit. You can see them moving around in there. So there's one here, there's one back here, two, let's see if I can turn this, three, um, four, five, there's one here, six, and then there's one guy on the ground that you can't see, he's right here, seven. And this tan stuff here is their food. Now if I bring this up close to the camera, you might be able to see like that really fine silk, okay? And there's other stuff in there. There's color poop and all kinds of other nastiness in there. So I won't open this up. Now what's gonna happen in here, boys and girls, is once the caterpillars get big and they're starting to get really big. So I, I guess probably by the beginning of next week, they'll probably be big enough because these guys came on Monday. They showed up in my mailbox. And they were very, very small, like I told you. Probably the size of um, from here, from my finger, tip of my pinky, to maybe about my knuckle. They were very tiny. They were very tiny. And they've grown quite a bit. So what's going to happen is they're going to climb to the top. And there's fabric right here. Can you see this fabric? There's fabric right here. And they're going to make a J. They're going to make a J. And they're probably, I would say, by the beginning of next week. It usually takes about them about five to ten days to get big enough and fat enough so they can undergo this. So they're going to go and they're going to make a J at the top of, and they'll attach themselves. And they'll start to shake. When they start to shake, they're making their chrysalis. And as they make their chrysalis, they'll start to shake, and they'll make this casing around themselves. And as they make the casing around themselves, that's where they'll stay for another week, maybe, or 10 days. And then inside, when they're done, they will, I'll take this top, I'll take them out of this jar, and I have a butterfly house. And I will put them inside this butterfly house. Now, hold on, I'm gonna open up this butterfly house. You might've remembered it from last year. So this butterfly house pops open. Like so, and I will attach with a hook. There's a hook inside, and I'll attach the hook up here or to the side maybe. And there's a little door here that I can reach my hand up in. I'll put it up here and I'll attach it by a hook. 
and that's filled our stay. And then I have some sugar water and things like that, that the butterflies, when they hatch, they'll be able to dry their wings and they will be able to get drinks of water because they like sugar water and I can put dried fruit in there or some fresh fruit in there for them to eat so they can get some nourishment. And then after a day or two, when they're ready to go and I will take them outside with my camera and we will set them free. So there's lots of things that are getting ready to hatch from the ground because it is springtime. So the flowers have become to, to bloom because it's springtime and other animals are going to be coming out, other insects. So an interesting fact, this is what it's going to look like. This is a painted lady butterfly. So this is what we're going to be seeing. And there's still notice some things we're going to talk about next week. The wings are symmetrical. Symmetrical means that they look the same on both sides. So here's, if this is the line of symmetry, the line that goes down the center and we could fold it over, it would be the same on both sides. So it's an adaptation that butterflies have. So there's a lot of different things that butterflies do to survive. And we're going to talk about that next week about how a butterfly survives because they don't live for very long. Not at all. So we'll talk about that next week. We'll talk about the adaptations that butterflies have. Some butterflies, a monarch butterfly is poisonous. They're the really pretty vibrant orange butterflies. But a viceroy butterfly is not poisonous, but it looks the same. It copies a monarch butterfly. I wonder why that is. Why does it copy? Hmm, interesting thought, interesting question. And then there's some butterflies that are really, really colorful. And then there's some butterflies who aren't very colorful. And there's moths. What's a moth? Moth is a different animal. Hmm, moths come out at night. Butterflies fly around during the day. Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to think about that for next week. But at the bottom of your sheet, I did give you a butterfly life cycle. You can see here's the eggs. Okay. And it comes down and it hatches into a caterpillar or a larva, and then it makes a chrysalis on a stick or something solid, and then the chrysalis opens up, and out pops a butterfly. Now this is something that you can print off or you can color. You can take a picture and send it to your teacher when you're all done. It does say color me, or you can draw your own if you want to make it your own and make it unique. And you can send it to me. You can send it to me in Class Dojo. You can send it to my email, however you want to send it. That's great. Next week, we're going to work on a comic strip about the life of a butterfly and what a butterfly's life might be like. There's some butterflies that are born without a mouth when they come out of their chrysalis. They have one job and one job only. It's actually not a butterfly. It's a moth. But it's, she's born without a mouth. She has one job. And I told you there was another thing that's coming out have to look up the 17 year brood of cicadas will be coming out of the ground now. That's right. They've been in the ground for 17 years and they only come out every 17 years. Now there's different cicadas that come out every other year, every four years, every two years, but this brood, the brood is like a family. They come out every 17 years and they come out as little tiny larvae or bugs. And then they eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And they grow and they're harmless. They just are really loud. So talk about that next week too. Or you might want to look it up by yourself and see. Maybe you can have some interesting questions to pose and say, hmm, talk to your mom and dad about the cicadas. They don't stay around for very long, maybe about 14 days or so. But those 14 days, they usually come out mid-May, end of May, beginning of June. So they're going to be visiting us very soon. But the cicadas at night, oof, they are loud. So boys and girls, as we travel in and watch our caterpillars turn into butterflies and watch them grow, there they are. And there's all that stuff in there. Oh, there's one moving. He's wondering what's going on. He's eating, I think. Wonder what's going on. Stay tuned next week. We'll see how many cocoons we have at the top. Maybe they'll be in our butterfly house and we can look at them a little bit more. I'm not going to take the caterpillars out because remember I told you, we don't touch things if we don't need to. We leave them in their natural habitat. And their natural habitat happens to be this jar that they're in right now. And we'll watch them grow from afar and see what we can happen. 
Now, if you happen to see some outside, that's great. Monarch butterflies love milkweeds, and that's where they like the sweet stuff to eat there. But they'll be coming soon when it gets a little bit warmer as it starts to warm up. Stay warm this weekend. I heard it's supposed to be very, very cold outside. Polar vortex is coming. And I will talk to you soon. Watch for pictures, because they're coming. Bye, boys and girls.